These are cast iron small block forward cylinder heads. These are World Products Windsor Senior Heads. And the purpose of this video is to show you how much flow I picked up uh, doing the modifications that I talked about in my last video, which is to recap, I did a gasket match to a 1262, Felpro 1262 gasket on the intake side, matched that to the intake runners on my Edelbrock RPM air gap intake manifold, as well as I smoothed out the chambers here, um, polished them. Uh, these are cast iron, so they're not, uh, you know, that pretty after you polish them. But, um, so I did a video on what I did to polish them. And so those are the only two modifications I did. Um, I also did some smoothing on the short side. There was a bit of a rough patch um, at the apex, so I used some um, emery cloth to get in here and smooth out this casting roughness, which was pretty bad on some of these intake ports. And so those are really the only three things I did um, to, which ended up improving the airflow. So I had had these work heads worked on about a year ago and I made a video about the numbers after um, they were taken to the machine shop. There was a, they did a valve job, um, performance valve job, I believe it's a five angle valve job. Although if you look at it, you can maybe see three or four, I think the top angles on the intake have been blended away, top and bottom. And I think are what you would call a radius valve job on the exhaust, um, but I'm not a cylinder head expert, but I think that's what was done. And so they flowed about 272 on the intake max and on the exhaust, um, they peaked at 207. Um, and so, after I did this work, I took them back to the machine shop and I'm going to show you those numbers. And just to, just to show you before and after, I'll show a couple clips of this is what the cylinder heads look like on the um, combustion chambers before I smooth them out. And here's what the combustion chambers look like after I polish them. This is a before and after look at the intake ports. And just to give you some numbers um, on the dimensions of the ports, this is at the push rod pinch. Uh, the push rod pinch is just the restriction here where the push rod slots are. Um, so that the intake port, you, when you're grinding, you can't go any wider um, left and right, or you'll grind through to the push rod slot. So that dimension between these two push rod holes is uh, 1.29 inches. The width of the ports, um, so before at the push rod pinch, they are now 1.14 inches wide, whereas before they were 1.12. But I did take had to take them a lot wider to match the gasket. Uh, on the outer edge and top and bottom. I mainly just went higher. Um, so, but at the push rod pinch where, where, where the restriction is, they went from uh, 2.01 inches high or tall to 2.09 inches after. Um, so combined the increase in cross sectional area at the push rod pinch increased from two and a quarter square inches to 2.38 square inches. Um, and so what I did was, I mean, I had to, to widen this to match the gasket size, and I pretty much just curved it back around and tapered it and did not try to go straight back. Otherwise, I would have risked grinding through to the push rod slot. All right, so the difference between the push rod pinch dimension and the max width now inside the intake port is uh, 1.29 minus 1.14. It gives you 0.15 inches. Uh, you divide that by two, so you've got roughly... 75 thousandths thickness on each side of the push rod pinch to the push rod slot, which is not a whole lot. So there's not a lot, there's not really any um, margin for grinding into, you know, making the port wider. Um, so that's just what those numbers are. I did have to take the ports a little bit higher um, because the intake manifold sat up high. Um, the floor of the intake and the roof of the intake set up higher relative to the cylinder head. Um, so I did have the flanges on the intake manifold milled 75 thousandths to, to drop it down. 
um, but it was still sitting too high and that's I believe it's just a combination of these heads have now been milled 30 thousandths um, using a 20 thousand 23 thousandths thick head gasket so that's about 20 thousandths thinner than normal plus the block has been decked 5 thousandths so we add all that up it's sitting about 55 thousandths lower the heads are than stock heads would be so effectively makes the intake manifold sit up higher so after having the intake manifold milled 75 thousandths I still had to take some of the roof of these ports out to so I wouldn't have a ledge going from the intake manifold uh, into the intake runners and additionally just to give you what the size of my intake my intake valve is 202 intake uh, Chevy size valve and it's 88 percent throat diameter which is 1.77 inches is what I measured so the area at the valve throat is 2.46 inches so I'm just throwing that out there for um, head porters and these numbers also of course don't take into account the valve diameter the valve stem diameter so I didn't subtract that out but I'm just giving you the general specs on these ports I'm also guessing if I went to a larger intake valve like a 205 or a 208 uh, I still would pick up more flow so I will show you what the numbers were so this is the numbers from when I had the heads originally, the valve job done. Um, the, like I said, the shop did a valve job and they did um, a bowl blend, uh, which is just smoothing out the roughness below the valve job, uh, smoothing out the transition. And so here's, here's what they flowed. So we've got 200, they were 138 CFM, four they were 220. 600 they were 270 and peaked at 272 on the intake side uh, the exhaust numbers um, so these are from another shop because the shop that did the work did not flow the exhaust so i took them to another local shop to get the exhaust numbers um, so these are the intake and exhaust and you can see the intake numbers are similar and a little bit lower and the exhaust peaked at 206.5 so we'll say call that 207 um, all right, so here are the updated flow numbers. So this old number at 200 was 138, and now we've got a 149 CFM, which is 11 CFM gain. 300 has gone from 194 to 216. 400 thousandths, it's gone from 220 to 256. 36 CFM, so that's a really big gain. 500 from 254 to 280. 600 that's 270 to 303 and 700 we've gone from 272 to 311 and 800 did not get a measurement before but um 800 now is 314 cfm so that's about i don't know 40 cfm gain uh in peak flow and i think those numbers are really good i don't think because this is only a 202 valve head which it seems like a lot of flow for a 202 intake valve. I think an AFR, say this is probably comparable to an AFR 205 Renegade head. I think these numbers outflow an AFR 205, at least up into probably five or 600. Um, and those are with, I think the 205 Renegade head has a 208 intake valve, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm sure if I were to have these um, Valves cut out for a larger valve, or the chambers cut out for a larger valve to a 205 or 208 intake, we probably gain, you know, I don't know how many more CFM, 10 or 20 CFM, depending on the valve. Um, so, so I think these numbers are really good. And so I'll put the AFR numbers up on the screen. These are from the AFR website for a 205 Renegade head. And just one more comparison here. I will, this is a article from Engine Masters. Uh, November of 2005 um, where they had a 393 Windsor motor with Windsor senior heads and these are the flow numbers for those heads that were heavily ported um, with the 208 intake valve and you can see you know at 400 they were 257 which is about the same as mine I think I had 256 um, and they peaked at 310 at 600 so I'm actually outflowing these heads with a smaller valve um, and as far as exhaust goes, I did not have these heads flowed again with the 
uh, on the exhaust side, there was additional cost at the machine shop and I didn't do any exhaust improvements other than polishing the chambers and narrowing the exhaust guide some. And I'm pretty sure I could improve the exhaust numbers by making the ports wider and taller, um, but I kind of want to get this engine together so I think the exhaust numbers are good enough. So there you have it. Um, if you have these heads, cast iron, World Product Windsor Senior Heads, maybe get a bad rap because they're um, not, not the latest and greatest in the cast iron and aluminum. But if you have them, these are just, this is just showing you what the potential is uh, with a little bit of work that I did. This is the first time I've ever done any grinding on a cylinder head. But, um, you know, with a decent valve job, I'm, I'm guessing the valve job is, is half of it, um, half of the flow and the modifications I did just, just remove some restrictions to flow. Um, and so that's where the, the numbers are coming from. Um, but yeah, with a little bit of work, the, you know, intake ports and smoothing up the combustion chambers and removing, I did a little bit of deshrouding, which you can go back and watch my previous video. Um, so that's, that's all I did. So my real purpose of taking these heads and putting them back on the flow bench was just to verify that I didn't ruin the flow and turn them into junk. Um, you know, I was expecting maybe five or 10 CFM. So I was really shocked almost when I got, you know, these numbers. Um, but, um, uh, so this is the last video you'll be seeing of these heads next video. They should be on an engine. So thanks for watching.